and 1991, 0.18. So it's important to understand what 80% confidence means. That does not mean that the probability is 80% or 0.8 that our true population parameter is between these two boundaries. The true population parameter <clears throat> either has or has not been captured between those two boundaries. So what that 80% represents is if we followed this method many, many times, if we proceeded to find random samples of size 30, we found the mean, we add and subtract 1.28 of our standard deviations from that mean. If we repeated this process many times, 80% of the confidence intervals we build using this method will capture the truth. Now, we do know what the truth is. The true mean was 1989.27. So this happens to be one of the 80% of confidence intervals built using this method that will capture the truth. Let me see if I can illustrate very specifically what we mean by 80% confidence. Bear with me just a second. If you recall recently, recently we passed the penny box around the class and we took random samples of size 10, 10 pennies out of the penny box and we found those sample means. We had a total of 93 of them. We had a total of 93 of them. Now we have simple random samples of size 10. 10 times 10 is 100. That's certainly less than the size of our population. That would be 518. Now the central limit theorem doesn't really apply here because 10 is a relatively small sample size. So I have to do a little bit of hand waving here. We saw in our simulation that normality is approximate using a sample size as small as 10. But the truth is we're not always guaranteed of that. The central limit theorem tells us when the population is not shaped normally, this population is not normal. The larger the sample size, the better the sample means are approximated by the normal distribution. So we saw that 10 is somewhat close. It's far from perfect, but it's somewhat close. At least for the point of this illustration then, what I wanna show you is, approximating normality here, going ahead and using normality, I want you to see what all 93 of the confidence intervals look like if we built all 93 of the confidence intervals at 80% confidence. So to build an 80% confidence interval, I have to take all 93 of our sample means. I have to add and subtract, there's that critical value of 1.28. I have to add and subtract 1.28 standard deviations. Now, we know the population standard deviation. This time, though, we have to divide by the square root of 10. That gives us a different standard deviation. There's more variability here. So the margin of error this time is 4.81 years. So what I did, I took every sample mean and I added and subtracted 4.81 years to find a lower and upper boundary to build an 80% confidence interval. So in the calculator, I had them in order in list one in the calculator. The lowest sample mean was 1978.9. When we find the lower and the upper boundary by subtracting and adding the margin of error, the lower and upper boundaries are 1974.1 and 1983.7. Notice that sample mean just happened to be one of the sample means that was extreme enough on the low end that when I add and subtract the margin of error, notice this confidence interval does not capture the true population parameter, which is here at 1989.27. Now the means, the dates, the mean dates in my list were in order. So notice quite a few of the very lowest means, the lowest one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. When we calculate the confidence interval using those lowest sample means, those lowest nine do not capture the true population parameter. The first one that captured it was here, it just caught it. Its lower boundary on this 10th confidence interval was 1979.8. The upper boundary was 1989.4. We just captured it. 
So notice, we have lots and lots and lots now of confidence intervals proceeding. All of these confidence intervals are all capturing the true population parameter. The pencil line in the middle is the true population parameter. Lots and lots and lots of them. Here's another page of them. We have 93 confidence intervals built here. Lots and lots of the confidence intervals, oops, until we get to this page. Suddenly at the very end, we had sample means that were so high. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine sample means that are so high that when you start at that sample mean and add and subtract the margin of error, look, we don't capture the truth. We just missed it here. The truth is 1989.27. The lower boundary on this confidence interval is 1989.3. This confidence interval missed it. So did all of these. Now they're close, but it doesn't matter. The true parameter is below that lower boundary. Look at what this means. These are levels 80% confidence. 18 don't capture the truth. 75 did. 75 out of 93, 80% approximately captured the truth.